Let's now switch gears and let's uh, talk to uh, Vinod Agarwal, the MD and CEO at Volvo Aishar and let's try and understand what really is this new scrappage policy and how exactly is going to really spell it out for the sector and their company. Mr. Agarwal, good to have you on the show. Uh, you know, just yesterday, the Union Minister Nitin Gadkari announced that companies in the CV as well as the PV segments have agreed to offer discounts now ranging from 2.75 to 3% for a period of about two years to buy a who scrap old vehicles. Tell us more about this. Uh, you know, how is it that you as a company intend to go about it? You know, that had been a long-standing, uh, you know, discussion which was going on with the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways that uh, to make this scrappage uh, policy more, uh, you can say, conducive for the customers to come forward for scrapping the vehicles. Uh, so we had been discussing that if the uh, if the manufacturers can offer some additional discount uh, to the people who are scrapping their vehicles, uh, that will be good. So I think uh, so that we have now, uh, you know, agreed and informed uh, the ministry that yes, uh, the industry is willing to come forward and uh, we are willing to offer additional discount and every company has given its uh, consent and agreeing to the additional discount. And uh, so that is it. I think that let's hope that it should be good for the uh, for the further success of the scrappage policy. How much percentage discount will you be offering, and from where will that? From when will that start? Let me rephrase it. No, we have said that we will give additional discount of uh, three percent for vehicles which are above three point five uh, ton GVW range. And uh, so on that, uh, of course, uh, I think there will be some uh, SOP standard operating procedure will be made that how the, this will be administered. And uh, then, of course, we are willing to start that immediately. Right. So do you see this move impacting your margins as well? Because it was just now that the margins for the commercial vehicle industry started to stabilize. How big of an impact uh, could this turn out to be for you? I think we must understand that this is not uh, across the board. This discount is only against the vehicles which are scrapped. So if the vehicles are scrapped and uh, those are getting replaced, it means that is also an incremental sale. So it is on the incremental sale. To that extent, uh, the overall margin will go up because the volume should go up. So I, I don't think we, we consider it as a concern for the overall margin because we will be selling more. And then uh, this uh, all the material which will come for recirculation, the all the scrapped vehicles, there will be uh, this material, uh, steel or aluminium or all other other uh, commodities which will come for recirculation, and that recirculation recirculated material uh, should overall reduce the uh, material cost. So in the long run, it should be good for the industry and good for the margins, not uh, negative for the margins. Can give us a sense of how many vehicles are getting scrapped now, any estimate on that, uh, how could this number increase on industry-wise? As of now, uh, very negligible uh, vehicles were getting scrapped. So now let's see that uh, with this new announcement, uh, we hope that the scrappage uh, should start happening more, but we still don't have any estimate. Right, and given that VECV and Bedinath LNG will be partnering to deploy 500 Aisha trucks, I want to understand a little bit more about this order, what this means for your LNG sales, your overall order book. No, from sustainability point of view, alternate fuels uh, are, of course, uh, the future, uh, which includes uh, all the CNG, LNG, electric trucks, hydrogen based fuels. So, therefore, uh, as part of that, um, LNG is a very, very important fuel and uh, so this is, we are very happy that now we have been able to sign this MOU for supply of 500 LNG trucks, uh, which is at, which are 55 ton uh, tractors and uh, so it's a, it's a new beginning for us and uh, of course it's a much, uh, much, much fuel efficient uh, fuel, LNG is uh, better as far as fuel efficiency is concerned. And uh, even though there is 
some initial cost may be uh, high, but uh, overall cost of ownership buys, uh, this is a better uh, preposition because uh, if you look at the emissions from LNG fuel, particulates are uh, absolutely, there are no particulates emission, even CO2 emissions are lo also lower. So therefore it is a better fuel. And uh, so we are very happy at this development. Right. And, uh, you know, the last time, Mr. Agrawal, that we were chatting with you, you were very bullish on the sales prospects for the commercial vehicle industry and said that FI25 sales can actually surpass what you saw in FI19 as well. Do you, uh, would you, are you sticking with that or are you more bullish now about the sector growth? I think fundamentally, if we look at the various factors that drive the CV demand, uh, now, these fundamental factors are economy and, uh, of course, the infrastructure spends, replacements, and, uh, and of course, the, uh, how the other uh, capex spends by government or how the other uh, fundamental factors are behaving. So, all these factors are positive. Uh, now, as of now, if you look at the current situation, current situation is not uh, very good, like the uh, commercial vehicle industry, if you look at the growth uh, which has happened till now, till July, the first four months, or uh, this month till now, uh, you know, the situation is a little bit tight. But we are very optimistic uh, that uh, there is a reason that why this industry was not so good till now, because initially it was the, uh, the new government was getting formed, there was elections and a lot of focus was there on elections. And uh, then the uh, monsoon period, uh, the commercial vehicle sales are not uh, very good. So now the monsoon is getting over and uh, hopefully next month onward, we should have the festive season and as well as uh, the second half, uh, you will also see more projects coming from the uh, government side because uh, the capex uh, allocations which have made in the fiscal budget of government of India I think uh, you will you will see more and more uh, spends happening out of that uh, allocation, which was not happening till now. So therefore, uh, we are very optimistic that second half is going to be much much better. So, with respect to exports, how the momentum is going with tensions in Bangladesh? Believe that your operations also got impacted. Any latest update on that? As of now, the situation remains uh, very volatile only. So, Bangladesh is still, as you know, the situation is not uh, back to normal. So, we are expecting that it should come back to normal. So, therefore, exports to Bangladesh continue to remain hit. And uh, But, of course, there are other countries like uh, Middle East and African countries or Southeast Asian countries. There, the situation is coming back. The exports, uh, which had dropped very, very significantly till last year, uh, seem to have been bottomed out. Now the markets are getting better this year, except for this latest setback on account of Bangladesh. Otherwise, the exports were had started growing. Uh, now we are keeping our fingers crossed that Bangladesh market should come back to normal soon. Right, and since you also had SIM, I just wanted to get in your take on the PV inventory. Um, what's the outlook? Uh, first of all, uh, I would also, I have also advised FADA members individually, FADA association individually, the FADA members, the dealers, they have to take up individually wherever they feel that the inventories are high, the dealers need to take up with their OEMs. I am sure no OEM would like its dealer to go down or go bad. Uh, so dealers, uh, OEMs, they have to take care of the dealers. If the OEMs don't take care of the dealers, then who is going to suffer? OEMs only will suffer because if the dealers dealers are becoming sick, then uh, that territory will also go down for the for the OEMs. So therefore, I I don't think why uh, why we keep on getting so many statements from FADA. Uh, they should advise their members uh, wherever the problem is there. They should talk to the concerned uh, you know company and. Uh, uh, that's how it should be resolved. It is not a matter where association has to come in between and uh, start talking on behalf of their companies. Like it's it's not a good practice. So I don't uh, uh, 
you know endorse this this uh, this sort of uh, you know uh, this sort of behavior Right. Okay, Mr. Agarwal, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and uh, speaking with us. In fact, if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.